Hello and welcome to Excel video 334. Did another project for that group I was telling you about in the last video where we went and took all of the unsold, all the open appointments out of the practice management system and summarized them in a pivot table. You can see here's how many open appointments there are for next week and the week after for this doctor, for this facility, this time, this day of the week, that kind of thing. And we can plan accordingly and try to fill some of those appointments. When you're ready to do more with the appointments information at your PM system, I'd love to help you. We're going to come back and play in Solver today. And I've closed Excel and come back in since. And you'll see that the good people at Solver remembered what we were doing. We know what the objective is and the cells we can change and the constraints we have. When we click Solve, we get a solution here. and We're going to click OK. And there's our solution. Now, let's say for a minute that when we come back into Solver, let's say that for whatever reason, this B5, if I slide it out of the way, is our projected patients per month. And we said it's got to be less than 100. It says, hey, you can do it at 75. What if we change and say, you know what, for whatever reason, um, we're losing a facility or we're losing a doctor or, you know what, we can only do 40 patients. And if we change our constraint to 40 now and click Solve, we get this exclamation point that says, hey, we don't have a feasible solution here. We can't solve this problem. So we can come over here and it'll say, hey, you know what? You're 11.25. You're nowhere near what you need to be. And so what you can do is you can return to the solver parameters dialog and click OK. We'll keep the we, you, Well, let me back up just a second. You can keep the solution that goes to 11.25 or you can go back to the original values. And let's do OK. So now we say, all right, if we can only have 40 then we've got to do something about this, either the constraint of the cost of the equipment or the reimbursement. So let's say, you know, what if the reimbursement, if we change the reimbursement and say, hey, you know what, it can go up to 120 now. Will that solve my problem given the other constraints I have? And if we do that and click solve, I still can't find a problem. So I'm going to go back to the dialog, see how the box stays checked. We say, OK, what if we change the cost of the machine? We knock it down to $35,000 and we solve. We still can't find it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to make a way to get at least 60 patients in there. We're going to do PRN. We're going to do something. We're going to get to 60 and solve. And now we have a solution. See the iterative process where we go through it again and again and cycle through it. And we can keep tweaking things until we get what we want. We can click OK. Whoops. You got to turn that off and then you can click OK and get back. If the cost is 35000 and we get all that 120 per patient and we can get uh, 48 and a half, 49 patients a month, we can make this work. That's what I wanted to show you today, kind of that iterative process of going back to the solver and back to the solver when you don't get a solution and then you keep working these parameters until you find something to make it work. Obviously, another thing you could do is change that to 7 or 8 and take more time to pay for the equipment. But that's the process I wanted to show you in this Excel video. The next thing we want to do is come back to Solver. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the reports that come back when you get a solution or you don't get a solution. See what they look like. We'll do that next time. Thanks for watching.